Hello, welcome back all my theorists to another What If Theories, and the question is, are aliens actually waiting for us to evolve? I honestly like this idea the most on why alien contact hasn't been achieved, and find it to be extremely plausible. First analogy is when we travel on a long walk to the middle of a forest and see a snail crossing over a simple log, do we say take us to your leaders? Or do we step on it because we're caught up in how beautiful today is, never noticing it? So we just don't find snails that interesting, unless we're hungry for escargot, or a conchologist, which is the study of shell mollusks. So the obvious gap between intelligence of a snail and humans is pretty massive for us as a society to give notice or care about snails. Now maybe there is a small group of aliens that are the conchologists of their society and studying us uninteresting humans as a hobby or on a science mission. Just as long as we don't end up like escargot, sounds like they are anthropologists which is the study of humanity. Wait a second, I bet you're thinking we are interesting damn it. We have done many great things. Well, we have by our standards, and by that I mean one of humans' greatest feats landing a man on the moon, which was a massive undertaking and accomplishment for humans, and the farthest humans have ever traveled in space ever, is about as equivalent as our buddy the snail, whose top speed is one meter per hour, venturing on a long mission to our neighbor's garden from yours. The snail took probably the same amount of time to get to your neighbor's house as it did for us to reach the moon on the Apollo mission which was about three days. Yet we think aliens must have noticed us by now for our accomplishments, right? It all comes down to perspective and while a scale called the Kardashev scale, developed by a Soviet astronomer Nikolai Kardashev, which breaks down all civilizations on a scale rating of 1 to 3. One of my favorite physicists, Dr. Michio Kaku, has made this scale more famous, bringing his own explanation of them as follows. A type 1 being a full control of planetary energy, being able to control the weather, manipulate earthquakes or volcanoes. A type 2 being able to play with stars harnessing all of its power. This civilization isn't bound by living on one planet and can travel to other systems, so it is never threatened by scarcity of resources. This civilization is like Star Trek. Then a type 3 which is able to control the energy output of an entire galaxy. This you then can manipulate black holes and space-time and travel the galaxy like in Star Wars. So where are we on this scale? We come in at an amazing zero. That's right. We haven't even made it onto the civilization scale yet, being that we still get our energy from dead plants, oil, and coal. Don't worry though, it's not our fault. Well, I mean, we are still new at this and our civilization by a cosmic time frame is really young. I mean, we really didn't kick things into overdrive till the Industrial Revolution, which started in the late 1700s and really kicked off in the early 1800s, which we have been accelerating rapidly to bring us to today's technological marvels we enjoy. So really, our higher end living is only a couple hundred years old, and well, could be much, much younger than other potential civilizations that have been around for thousands, millions, or even billions of years. The Earth is only 4.5 billion years old, and we have been on it for a fraction of that time. The universe is estimated to be around 14 billion years old, so alien civilizations could have been around before the Earth and our solar system was ever formed. So I guess the question is, when are we going to be interesting enough for aliens to take an interest in us? Well, we have time, and it's been speculated that in the next 100 years we could transition into a Type 1 civilization. Then as we start colonizing other planets or going to other solar systems, aliens might chime in and say hello there, welcome to the Federation of Planets, or maybe they will say okay, now that you are transversing space there are a couple rules you need to go by, which they might have their own space police or policies we then have to abide by. I know, bummer right? But keep in mind, as we like to think that this is our planet, which it really isn't, we just have lived here for a tiny amount of time. Space is a new frontier where other civilizations have been way, way before us. Doubtful they will let some new civilization on the block do whatever they see fit, so we could be in for a massive reality check when that day comes. All I know is I can't wait. Thanks for watching this episode, guys, and love to hear your thoughts and theories on this topic. And if you want to see more videos like this, as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.